Hello everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I am extremely excited to show you this game. This is game one of the finals of the 2022 War of the Ring World Tournament. And these players not only placed in the top 32 of the Swiss section of the tournament, which was eight games long, they've also made it through a gauntlet of the single elimination top 32 playoff. So Rex 00V, maybe 005, is undefeated for the entire tournament. And Galahad B is one of the top rated in the world, either top one or top two right now. So both of these players are extremely strong. And uh, I have not seen this game. So I am watching it for the first time right now. I traveled for 17 hours today, got home, and before going to sleep, I'm making this video because I'm that excited to watch it. So let's jump in. In the first game, since Rex was the higher seed, they got to pick if they wanted to play Shadow first or if they wanted to play Free People, they have chosen Shadow. And the players are not using any sort of uh, house rule for handicapping for Free People, so no, no action tokens or rings or anything like that because they're each going to play each side once. And then if they tie and go one and one then they'll play a tiebreaker match and in that tiebreaker match they'll use two action tokens but for now this is just a straight up base game and you can see that free people uh got thrandall's archers which i think is perhaps the best strategy card to start with you always want to reinforce basically always want to reinforce woodland realm and mirror of galadriel is really nice to be able to get uh will of the west early if you need it and shadow got worn with sorrow and toil which i really like early on and Day Without Dawn, you know, not necessarily that great right at the very beginning, but could be useful to stall Gandalf or Strider, especially if Mirror of Galadriel gets used and Shadow gets enough musters early on. So let's see how the game begins. All right, so Rex allocates zero eyes, rolls two, and only gets one muster and three Palantirs. This is definitely a bad, bad start for Shadow. And oh my gosh, uh, this is this is exciting getting to watch. Almost always I know the games because I, I played them, but but this is just super exciting to get to see this. Look at this start. Oh my gosh, what do you do? I mean, clearly Free People is going to use this Palantir and play Thrandall's Archers, get two, um, two nice uh, strategy cards, and hopefully we'll be able to make good use of these musters. What does Shadow do with this role? I mean... Normally, you'd get to play more with Sorrow and Toil on turn one, but but I don't even think free people will move once. Maybe Galahad is going to use a ring to move once, but I certainly wouldn't want to as free people because then Shadow can get Saruman. So I'm guessing these Palantirs are just drawing strategy cards, and then hopefully Shadow will get to play one or two cards. We'll see. All right, so... All right, drawing a strategy card, as expected by Shadow. Free people passed. Shadow drew a strategy card. Free people will play Thrandall's Archers, obviously. King Brandsman, oh, what a redraw. Oh, and also Swords and Ariador. So these are great. These are, I mean, you know, maybe not great. Obviously, this is a tough, tough role to deal with. But I like to see King Brandsman. This is really a nice defense of the Dew line already. And, you know, there is something to consider here where you could get an early... Um, elves to war. I don't. I don't know that you really want to do that, but it's something to think about. We'll see. We'll see what I. You know, given that these redraws, I just play King Brandsman. I mean, that's great. All right, another draw of strategy cards and another unplayable card. So both of these are unplayable and not really useful. So this is this is really quite a bad start for uh, Shadow, like really bad. The free people, you know, obviously it's not great to not be moving the Fellowship, but you are reinforcing some really key locations. Oh my gosh, and Celeborn's Galadrium. Wow, these are some great draws by free people. I mean, obviously it's not a great role, but they're really making the best of it. So, all right, Isengard to war, Gondor towards war once. All right, I think that makes sense. It makes me think that maybe free people is considering using a ring. I don't know. I would tend to play Celeborn's Galadrim before mustering Gondor to war, but okay. I mean, look at this. Shadow basically did nothing interesting. Okay, Swords and Ariador. I'm not sure that I would do that. 
Um, I think I'd probably prefer to play Celeborns, but the daylight effect is really nice, and you do have to be cautious with the Elven Force Pool. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think this is fine. In general, these units are not going to see a lot of play. Um, so I would be more inclined to play Celeborns, but I understand it. I could also just see a regular muster of the Elves, um, especially since I know I have Celeborns, and I, I know that I can defend Lorien pretty well, and I've already started defending Woodland Realm pretty well. But... Okay, so it's an Ariador. Let's see what they redraw. Book of Mazarbol. Okay, so this opens up some really interesting early um, possibilities for getting Dwarves to War, but you've already defended Do pretty well. All right, and then um, Shadow now draws... Interesting. So Shadow draws a character card here. I don't necessarily understand that. Um, I mean, literally, there's nothing they could play. So, so I get that, but why, why switch to character after all that? Um, I guess seeing all the strategy cards drawn by, by free people and seeing the defenses, they're, they're planning on doing a little bit more corruption. Okay, I would be more inclined to just draw yet another strategy card and then hope to get Corsairs early, hope to get New Powers Rising earlier. Um, Horde from the East is already pretty good. I'd be tempted to discard Day Without Dawn early and just, just leave the threat of it out there. All right. Wizard Staff. Oh, my gosh. What card draws by free people? Okay. These are these are nice cards for Shadow. Obviously, it would have been nicer if they had gotten them a little bit sooner. Um, okay. Ringwraiths are abroad. Shadows gather. I th what, what would you discard here? I don't know. Yeah, I hate to discard to look high. Um, I think I get rid of Day Without Dawn here. I don't know. Maybe they drew a character card. And, and I hope, by the way, the, the players may comment. Uh, there may be live chat um, in, in conjunction with this video. And so if for anybody who's here live chatting, welcome. Uh, sorry, I didn't welcome you sooner. I, I'm very glad you're here. And I look forward to reading all the comments. Um, maybe, maybe... Shadow drew a character card thinking that it would be easier to discard, less painful to discard. All right, what do you discard a shadow? I don't know. Day Without Dawn. Okay, and I think that makes sense because free people have to play around it. Otherwise, it would take up a lot of space in your hand. You're nowhere close to getting everybody to war. Um, so I think that makes sense. Wizard Staff is very interesting. Um, you know, it's the best anti-corruption card in the game, basically. So... I would be tempted to play it, but the Fellowship is moving slowly. All right, let's see what happens. All right, so Shadow gets no eyes, gets at least a good number of musters, and then free people gets full three movement. So that's really nice. So you don't even need to play Wizard Staff here. You just run with the Fellowship. All right, so they move once, guaranteed, safe, no eyes. And we get uh, Shadow gets Sauron to war. Um... Fellowship moves again. Shadow armies are moving. I'm. It's interesting to see this this army here in Daggerlad. Why why did we not merge this up a little bit more? I guess the plan is to prepare for a Shadows Gather, but I would be more inclined to save it. I guess we'll see what happens to it. I mean, this could this could come up to Dol Golder and then Dol Golder comes north or comes to Lorien. I I don't know. It feels like they're going towards Gondor here. Um, because Gondor got mustered one toward war, it does make it a tempting target so that the Witch King can um, get in on turn two. So it could be nice at least Shadow, even though the Fellowship is making some good progress this turn, I would expect by the end of this round that Shadow has both Ising both Saruman and the Witch King at war. Uh, I mean, in play. And so nine dice to four is always nice for Shadow. All right, so we get um, get things moving here. And uh, Asgiliath gets attacked. Gondor goes towards war. Gondor is at war. We don't have... Do we have any cards played? All right, Cruel is death here. Um, yeah, I think that makes sense. 
you're pro you're probably not attack I, I well you're getting one more no you're not getting another attack with the witch king this round you're putting Minas Tirith under siege so I guess it makes sense to play it because you're going to be drawing two cards anyway um shadow is really sort of I feel like they're almost giving up on the fellowship right now even on turn two they're just going all out military here because Isildur's Bane is a very powerful card effect so and they they did get an early warm of sorrow and toil I don't know you know it's obviously nice to allocate zero eyes and get get one eye or two eyes but but rolling zero eyes is a risk and we saw that happen here often this can happen on turn one but it can happen on turn two i guess if fellowship doesn't get any movement all right so isildur's bane attacking into asgiliath gondor is at war and there are no hits all around obviously this is not going well for shadow uh free people get basically the perfect roll this turn with three movement and a muster into Minas Tirith, filling it up um and Shadow puts Minas Tirith under siege, as predicted, and we get Saruman, and then the Fellowship moves a third time, and we get the Witch King. And what's interesting here is, I wonder, I wonder if Free People considered, given that there were no hits into Osgiliath, they could have retreated their units into Minas Tirith from Osgiliath, and then instead of using that muster, they could have used a ring and gotten a fourth movement. Completely safe, completely past Moria. I think that I think that this play makes sense. It's better not to give Shadow a ring. It really was a productive muster that you could do into Minas Tirith. This uh, reinforces Polar Gear nicely. That can become a real bottleneck for Shadow. And you do have wizard staff in hand, so you know you can make it past Moria safely. Though it's possible that free people might not even play wizard staff, potentially. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens there. I could also see some separating of companions, um, and then Book of Mazarbul, and then crowning Aragorn, and leaving Gandalf as the guide for a little bit. We'll see. All right, so Shadow is definitely, I would say, behind here, but their uh, potential hope is that they're rolling nine dice to four. All right, so let's see what happens. We get Shelob's Lair and the Shadow is moving. Again, what do you discard here? I'm, maybe they're getting rid of Ward with Sorrow and Toil. I mean, even though it's early on and everybody's in the Fellowship, um, it just seems like they're not really going for a corruption strategy. And so then you just keep all this military stuff. All right. Shadow is moving Swarm Bats. All right, so so Shadow Shadow discarded Shadow is moving and Swarm Bats ability. I really like the Swarm of Bats ability, especially if right now you're thinking, okay, where are your victory points going to come from as Shadow? Like Minas Tirith and Pelargir, that's three. You can take this army in Dol Guldur plus something here and take Lorien, that's five. I feel like... I feel like uh, Rohan could easily be a target. And then you'd really like the Swarm of Bats into Fords of Aizen to prevent those guys from retreating. So, you know, that's eight. And then maybe the two cities or maybe one other stronghold, maybe maybe Woodland Realm. I mean, obviously Dol Amroth would be a nice thing to get, but because you put Gondor to war and you're, you don't have Corsairs, you're just nowhere close to taking... Dol Amroth, I think, I think this is going to be really a tough game for Shadow right now. Um, and if you're going to keep Warren with Sorrow and Toil, why not keep Isildur's Bane? Because that, I feel like, is a more harmful effect, or potentially more harmful effect, than Warren with Sorrow and Toil. I mean, obviously that could discard quite a few cards, but and not just discard a few cards also sort of modify the way shadow plays all right so i don't know if you saw it um i was focused on what shadow discarded but um the free peoples discarded wizard staff so i i am really surprised by that i i guess they're just really they really want to kill off gandalf 
and get um and get uh the extra die but i feel like I don't know. I, I guess the fellowship is doing well, so they're not worried about corruption. And they did draw Athalos. So they're thinking, I'm gonna kill off Gandalf, Strider will be guide, I'll be able to play Athalos, so I'm just not gonna ever use Wizard Staff. I mean, that's incredible. To to be doing so well with the fellowship that you're just not gonna play Wizard Staff. I know it, it is tricky because it slows down your it slows down your dice, but I feel like Shadow Military is not going that fast. And depending on how things go through Moria. All right. Anyway, uh, I'm not sure that I would have done that, but I definitely see the logic of it. We'll see if they roll a Will of the West and if they can kill off Gandalf. All right. So Shadow has to allocate an eye. They get one eye and a bunch of mustard. So this is more what they want to see. Uh, that is a good roll for Shadow. Oh my gosh. And look at this beautiful roll for free people. So free people are just really doing well here so they're gonna move once with the, with the character die move again with the will of the west if needed really hoping to get hit to kill off gandalf probably if they get missed twice which is relatively unlikely against two eyes they're probably going to use a ring to move um a third time to really make sure they get gandalf this round and then they're set up with athelos and if they happen to not get um if they happen to get hit earlier on they can use this palantir to hide wow and maybe Gandalf is coming coming to Grey Havens to be able to play Book of Mazarbal. I could see that potentially. I mean, this is just great for free people. Uh, Shadow, we're doing okay, but I think it's just going to be hard to get 10 victory points. And all right, so free people moves and they get missed. Shadow gets... Um, Southrons and Easterlings toward war. And all right, so free people get missed again. They're at five movement with no hits. And even though you're not getting Gandalf, you're going to have to spend a ring to maybe get Gandalf turn three. Like you're still very happy because you're getting such good movement out of this. All right, now this is an interesting moment because now all of the... Um, all of the shadow units, uh, shadow factions are at war. And so you really are threatening Day Without Dawn. And so what could happen is the free people spend a ring, give you the, give you the ring, move again, kill off Gandalf, and then you play Day Without Dawn and get rid of their Will of the West. So, you know, the fact that they discarded Day Without Dawn, I, could they have foreseen this moment where, you know, they held on to it? I don't know. My inclination was also to get rid of Day Without Dawn. You heard me say that. Um, but this is something that can happen. So, yeah. I, and I think free people will have to, um, not have to, but they will likely play the odds that you don't have it and will go for it. And so if you do happen to get it, maybe that's a good reason to keep it. I don't know. This game is great. All right. So, but do you have it? Look at this. They're talking about it, but do you have it? All right, they're talking about they're talking about uh, day without dawn. Not like I can prevent it, anyways. I guess right. So so free people is going to spend their ring. Okay, they're passing a few times. Sure. All right, we get Southrons and Easterlings towards Umbar. And oh, okay. So this is an interesting moment. If they had drawn more strategy cards and gotten to Corsairs of Umbar, they could potentially play this here and besiege Dol. Uh, Dol Amroth before it managed to muster up, which is relatively unlikely, but maybe maybe you play to your outs there. All right, so they're just going to march in. They don't have a Nazgul, but they do have Ringwraiths are abroad. So they can actually get Ringwraiths are abroad into Pilar gear, Lamadon, Dol Amroth under siege with no elites in it. So that's pretty great. All right, so. Ring racer abroad. We go into Pilar gear. So this is pretty. This is pretty efficient. And now, so they're playing. A, they're playing a strategy card here. Um, you know, I would be tempted to play if they had swarm of bats. Maybe this would be a nice swarm of bats moment. Um, 
I don't know that free people is really playing scouts here if they have it. I think if I had scouts as free people, I would be unlikely to play it here. And then I would hope that a few of these units in Pilar gear survive. And then I retreat some of them to Lamadon. And then I use scouts from Lamadon into Dol Amroth. So as Shadow, I'm kind of thinking, oh, I wish I had my, I wish I had my uh, Swarm of Bats here. Probably. All right. This is a, whoa. Okay. I did not expect that. I would have um, thought that Shadow would have played played maybe Deadly Strife here, but I guess they're just cycling into additional cards. Um, you know, imagine this was this was Swarm of Bats instead of um, instead of Warm of and Toil. It's kind of a wash because of advantageous position, but um, you'd get to redraw a strategy card, which I think at this point you probably prefer. Okay. So let's see what happens. Two sixes, two sixes from Shadow. That's nice. One hit from um, Free People, and um, that's pretty nice. All right, and even though Shadow, I mean, even though the Free People have um, gotten so many strategy cards, they still have not drawn a single Scouts. So I'm pretty sure they're going to try and kill off Gandalf. Yep, a ring. They move again. And then this time they get hit. And it's a zero reveal. So uh, theoretically, I guess, Gandalf could be potentially not killed off here. That would be pretty crazy. All right, so they go... Clearly they go through um, Moria because they want to kill off Gandalf at this point. They end up in Eastern Net on turn three having taken no corruption, and then this if if they don't get Gandalf here, that would be nice for Shadow. We'll see. End of one. Okay. So clearly they're going to lose Gandalf to that one. Strider is now guide, and um, Shadow takes... Uh, oh, okay. So they redrew, they redrew um, Breaking the Fellowship. They're playing... They're playing Breaking the Fellowship here as a character card i guess just to cycle it but it's actually reducing their ability to kill this unit i guess their odds of killing that unit are pretty high um but again why don't we prefer swarm of bats cycling through our strategy cards um all right in any case they kill the unit and um free people get to hit back and now i mean this is this is pretty impressive that shadow managed to get dol amroth under siege with no reinforcements at all and free people do not have Immerhill of dol amroth and the elves are not at war so even if they had cared in ships they couldn't play it so i think this is a really nice turn of events for shadow obviously it's not great that um free people got gandalf but i think now this really presents an opportunity for shadow to get enough victory points to win the game because now they can get the 10 the five from gondor the three from rohan and then um two more from either lorian or woodland realm and i do like that um that free people is holding on to kindred of glorfindel and Caliborn's galadriel because it gives them some options to reinforce if those get some surprise attack, either new powers rising, Rage of the Dunlindings, you can end up with an attack in Rivendell pretty quickly. And elves are not at war. So I think it makes sense to hold on to that. All right, there's another way. Oh, and now free people get their their scouts. Just one, one round too late. All right, so what would you discard as uh, Shadow? I don't know. I mean, they, they're just cycling character cards. Are they going to even play these reds? Like, if you if you never reduce the hunt pool, then the reds aren't nearly as useful. Um, I don't really know what their strategy is. I wonder, do you get rid of a reinforcement card? I mean, these are nice if you end up rolling a bunch of Palantirs. And you do need to save some uh, armies in case you go for Lorien and New Power is Rising. I mean, and uh, Power to Great is played. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what you get rid of. Uh, give it to us is not a lot of corruption, but it can really slow down the fellowship racing up Mordor. Um, Falthing from the Deep has a chance of catching Strider. And, um, you know, there are still quite a few eyes. I feel like I'm Shadow is like trying to go more military, so I'm going to predict Falthing from the Deep. 
Though maybe second guess will look high. I'll go foul thing from the deep. Let's see. She loves Lair. Okay, so they got rid of She Loves Lair. Neither of my picks. Um, but I think that makes sense if you are just not hunting the Fellowship much. Foul Thing from the Deep can potentially be a stall uh, if you get a reveal. It's a little unfortunate that two of the reveals have already been drawn, the zero reveal and the one one reveal. Um, so I think that's why I put Foul Thing for the Deep a little bit higher, but... Okay, they have to allocate one eye. Oh my gosh, Shadow, what a ridiculous roll. Five eyes. Oh my gosh, Shadow. I cannot believe Rex just rolled that. And then we get this beautiful roll from, um, from the free people. Now, I will say, the fact that they managed to get Gondor under siege before, all, before, this, before this ridiculous roll is nice. So, you know, Granted, this is a very bad roll. Um, they're going to have a lot of trouble dealing with it, but it could have been worse. Certainly could have been worse. All right, so what do we expect free people to do? I would expect them to hide possibly with a character die hide and move once, um, but maybe just uh, maybe like a Palantir hide. Let's see what they have. Yeah. Uh, maybe a Palantir hide and then move, see how it goes, move again. I mean, you're not really worried about corruption. You have Athelos, you have There's Another Way. Um, they're kind of doing fine. I think I might even move twice, but we'll see what happens. I definitely like this army muster to get these units from Edoras into Westamnet because Shadow has had a slow start and rolled a lot of eyes. Let's see what there's to... So they're, all, they're plus three on eyes. Um, and they're, it's been really clumpy. Um, okay, so I would expect Shadow to try and take out Dole Amroth. They're there, and they just need to, to take care of it. And I would also expect that Shadow would try and take care of Minas Tirith, you know, if they have a little extra time. We'll see. Me, when you attack as Shadow, do you attack with the army die and then save this character in case you want to reposition your uh, Witch King to Minas Tirith? Maybe. Um, and then what is free people doing with this muster? I would expect maybe starting to get elves to war or maybe you just play Celeborn's Galadrim or Kindred of Glorfindel. Um, all right, let's see. So, Free People starts by hiding with the Palantir. Okay, that's what we expected. Shadow passes. Oh my god. All right, Free People moves. At least at least Shadow gets a hit. As a rule note, even though there are six eyes in the hunt box, they only can roll five dice. If they're in Mordor, an eye would deal six damage. But outside of Mordor, the most number of dice you can roll is five. All right, so they roll five dice, they get a hit, and they get a three, not a reveal. Obviously not great. Um, now, what do you do? Is what do you do as Shadow here? I, th I mean, as free people here, you clearly don't want to lose Strider because of the efficiency, and you have Athelos. Um, but at the same time, you do want to start to whittle the Fellowship down so that you can get Gollum and um, move faster. My inclination probably would be take a random. You know, you don't want to lose Strider, but you are, um, you would still be hidden right now. And it's only one out of six, and it would be very efficient uh, use of corruption. So I think I would risk the random. Also, I didn't comment on it, but I'm realizing it now. Gandalf showed up in Fangorn and did not show up um, in Grey Havens to be able to play Book of Mazarbul. Um, and then Book of Miserable got played as a combat effect, a uh, combat card earlier. But that was a possible path. And because the Fellowship was going this Moria route and you have a chance of taking randoms and ending up with hobbits in, in Fangorn, I, I might have considered it. Because it seemed like the Dew line was well defended, pretty well defended, and Shadow was probably not coming up there, um, I don't know that you really needed it. So I understand why the free people went this way particularly because Rohan has been um, a little weak, honestly. Um, it's been lucky that uh, Shadow did not get new powers rising and more attacks into 
potentially into Rohan. Okay. Um, all right. Interesting. So free people took three corruption. Uh, yeah. So they were at zero. They go to three. I think because for some reason I was thinking they were at one corruption and didn't want to go up to four. But yeah, zero to three I think makes sense, particularly because you have Athelas in hand. Okay. So um, better to keep Strider. Especially with a role like this, where you get, um, you can move a second time, then you can hide in case you get revealed, and then at the start of next turn, you can, uh, you'll only be two away, very likely to be able to make it into Mordor, or good chance to get into Mordor. All right, whoa, okay, so we're playing, we're attacking into Dual Amroth, we're playing Foul Thing as a combat effect. All right, so maybe I didn't properly evaluate Foul Thing for its combat effect. It is a good combat effect when you have five leadership. Um, and Shelob was not a useful combat effect. So I'm a little surprised Horde from the East is not being played, but maybe the plan is to use that as a card effect into East Rune and then sort of surprise attack on the Dwarves. That could be, that could be pretty nice. We also have Mumakil, which is a good, um, combat effect to help you take Erebor. So, all right. Let's see what happens. And also, I guess free people, I mean, Shadow is trying to cycle into something, I guess could be useful to play uh, into Black Captain Commands would be a nice, nice card, I guess. All right, look at that beautiful roll by uh, Shadow. They got three hits and Dol Amroth is done. And that is that. And they did, by the way, use an army die so that now their character die. Oh, and they redrew Black Captain Commands. All right. So um, to be fair, Sh Shadow has been pre pretty vigorously cycling character cards so that um, this is one absolutely one of the benefits of cycling your character cards because um, you get Black Captain Commands, you get Ring Wraiths are abroad. Um, these, are, these are powerful, powerful character cards. Um, all right. So free people is indeed moving a second time. Oh my gosh. So they got missed. So this is a miss on five dice, six eyes. This box is so big. It can't even fit the eyes. You can't even see that there, I'm pretty sure there's six eyes in there and, and it's just overflowed the box. Right, we have we actually literally have six eyes in there. Yes, allocated an eye and then rolled five. So that's hilarious. So the box is overflowed. Um, I mean, only only five really matter. So that's fine. But okay. In any case, fellowship got missed. What what a great situation for for free people. They're just just feeling feeling good obviously shadow is you know having some hope alive but uh good for good for free people all right interesting so we got half orcs and goblin men into Minas Tirith they do need to reinforce it so I guess that makes sense they do that first before playing black captain commands okay fair enough so that they have a little bit more powerful uh options there and then Spirit of Mordor gets one hit. Okay, lose a regular. That's interesting. You know, again, so free people just used an army muster to, to get an expected five-thirds hit. So that's between one and two expected hits to weaken Minas Tirith. Could be good, could be worth it. But I like the scouts from Fords of Eisen into, um, into Helm's Deep. And I like getting these units from Edoras into Westamnet. Um, I mean, I probably will roll an army muster next time. But, yeah. All right, Black Captain Commands, Minas Tirith. Here we go. Uh, Shadow is playing a strategy card. And it is, we come to kill. Again, I am surprised by some of the card play you know i feel like ulug high is a potential reinforcement in minas tirith or wherever you need to be 
I guess the plan is to do a half army movement from Dol Amroth into Lamadon and then maybe Shadows Gather or just Shadows Gather these Dagger Lad units into Minas Tirith. Another option, we see maybe some really advanced planning on Shadows' part, getting these armies into Dagger Lad. Um, I guess we come to kill is fine. And we're just being a little more cautious against uh, Deadly Strife, just holding that uh, for Horde of the East options. So, okay, I understand Ulukai. Nice play. Particularly nice play against Advantageous Position. And we and we um, sort of baited out Kindred of Glorfindel, which is interesting. Uh, free people saved Celeborn's Galadrim. Uh, it's just a powerful, very powerful card effect and also combat effect. So it was good they saved it. No hits, no hits from Shadow on that one. And free people get two. So obviously that combat did not go the way that Shadow wanted. And then they get no hits on the We Come to Kill. Will they press? I'm assuming no. And they stop and they draw Shadow Lengthens. Okay. So free people will muster Rohan one toward war. And uh, we get Bilbo's song, Power Too Great, for free people. Uh, I would say those are pretty useful. Bilbo's song, you know, they're not too worried about corruption. But, you know, it's not, not bad to see it. And... Um, Power to Great is, is quite nice to be able to stall um, an attack against Lorien or uh, Rivendell. And particularly if if free people if Shadow draws Balrog, um, they may be tempted to go after Lorien. And so it's nice to have that to counter it. All right. Uh, Nazgul Strike could be useful at stalling the Fellowship if they are close to getting in. Unlikely to work, but could. Um, Rage of the Dunlandings, potentially good to go after Rivendell or Lorien. And again, Power to Great could be a nice foil to that. So we'll see what happens. Uh, one eye for Shadow. And two more eyes, three Palantirs. Not the sort of role that Shadow wants to see. And the free people will get not a perfect role, but not, you know, that's going to be good enough. Um, maybe they'll have to use a ring if they get stalled, but, um, you know, that's probably good enough. They start by using the Will of the West, which I think makes a lot of sense, uh, because you know you're going to want to move twice this turn anyway. So, um, might as well use the Will of the West and protect yourself from Day Without Dawn. And I will say, this is also a nice moment where, um, we can see the correctness of not taking a random when they when they got that three because here is a moment where they don't have that many extra character dice particularly if there's you know a nazgul search or a foul thing or a, i guess foul things already been played but or an orc patrol or something like that that reveals the fellowship nazgul strike um having strider to be able to hide means they're going to get into mordor this round and a one out of six chance of of risking strider is not that high but why take it at all if you don't have to? So, all right. So, you know, what is Shadow going to do this round? I don't know. I guess they're going to try and they're going to reinforce in Minas Tirith. They're going to try and take out Minas Tirith. And maybe they're going to stall, try and stall the Fellowship a little bit and then go on to their next targets. But this is not looking particularly good for Shadow. Um, they've just gotten two, their, their dice have just been, action dice have just not been cooperative enough all right a hit at least here and they get an eye which is a reveal which is nice shadow will uh take the corruption again be revealed which i think makes a lot of sense and then um okay interesting so they're attacking in Minas Tirith again and i guess that's for efficiency because they want to bring this full five units from Dagger Lad into Minas Tirith, would be my sense of it. Um, it's a little strange because you're going to end up using an extra attack, but maybe they need that one extra hit point to finish it off. I don't know. Okay, so 
Shadow's playing a strategy card. Are we finally going to play Horde from the East? I don't know what else it could be. I guess maybe Relentless Assault. I like Relentless. I like Rage of the Dunblindings as a card effect, especially with three Palantirs showing. All right, we finally see Deadly Strife. And, you know, especially if you're going to play Deadly Strife, why not merge this army in first? Because if you merge this army, if you merge the Dagger Lad into Minas Tirith first, now you have 12 hit points. You play Deadly Strife and you can potentially finish the combat in one round if you get four hits. You expect between three and four hits. If you get four hits, you could finish it. All right, interesting play of uh, no quarter. Um, instead of trying to sort of conserve hit points, I think because we see the level of weakness of the Witch King, maybe free people is more tempted to try and dish out extra damage. All right, let's see how this combat goes. Only two hits on the initial combat roll for Shadow. Let's see what the leadership reroll gets them. Only one more. So three hits, that's below average for a Deadly Strife with full leadership. Kind of bad luck for a Shadow there. And Free People gets one, two, three so far. Four plus one, five hits. So not going well in Minas Tirith for Shadow. Redraw the onslaught fellowship hides with a palantir um all right so we're doing army movement okay this is interesting i so we're i guess the plan is that we're going to use this army movement to get um from lamadon into uh the lamadon units into minas tirith um with we're going to use uh shadow lengthen or shadows gather i guess to get there um i think that makes a lot of sense i wonder though if we play rage of the dunlendings first especially now that we've seen um power too great is gone now i'd feel tempted to get my um my army units going because what I could do is I could play um, Rage of the Dunlandings into Moria. Then with this half movement, I could go uh, from Dole Amroth into Lamadon and then Moria into Dimroll Dale, which would then be a pretty sizable army. And then, oh, yes. Okay. So I'm wrong. <laughs> it doesn't work. I was going to say that I could use, uh, I could use Shadow Lengthens to get this uh, Dol Golder army into Dimrald Dale, while I also get this Lamadon army into Minas Tirith, but it doesn't go to Minas Tirith. All right, so it turns out Rex has a great plan and um, no need to play Rage of the Dunlings right now. Let's see what they do with the other half movement. Okay, Dimrald Dale. So they're preparing to go into Lorien as is without, um, without playing Rage of the Dunlings first. Okay. Um, fine. So shadows gather. Interesting. Okay. So they did play. All right. Shadows gather into, uh, Minas Tirith and then free people plays Athelos now because they know that they're going to make it in uh, barring, um, barring cruel weather. They know they're going to make it in and so they want to be able to start taking random casualties. Might as well use this Palantir to play Athelos. Gets three Corruption Healed. Things are going well for the Fellowship. Um, interesting. So it makes sense to me that Shadow would use a ring this round because they just didn't get enough attacks. But I don't know that I'd rather use a muster. I feel like, I guess, Give It To Us is getting played and Nazgul Strike is getting played. So that's why we're using the muster. All right. All right. Attack into Minas Tirith. We are playing... Shadow is playing a character card here. They're playing Nazgul Strike? All right. I wonder if they had just temporized a little and played Give It To Us instead as their 
um, before using a ring. And then you see if the fellowship moves and gets revealed, which certainly there's a chance of that, uh, then you know you won't be able to play Nazgul Strike. But this way, like, it would it would be nice, I think, to play Nazgul Strike to potentially, if, they, if the fellowship moves safely. Uh, all right, so... Black Breath, Heroic Death. Oh, okay. So the timing of this is that the free people will get to use Heroic Death first because they're on defense. So this is going to be just a tough, tough battle for Shadow. Wow, good thing Confusion wasn't played. They got no hits on the combat and then one hit on the reroll. And free people got one hit. They're just going to lose their leader. Uh, this is a tough battle for Shadow. Shadow redraws Morgul Wound, and now they know for sure they are not going to be able to stall the Fellowship. Um, I might have been tempted as Shadow to not play the character card because um, it sort of feels like you're cycling to try and get Cruel Weather. I don't know for sure, but all right. They uh, Shadow presses, uh, plays a Shadow card here. Are we playing Onslaught? I'm going to go with guessing Onslaught. And is Free People going to play a card? Maybe Heroic Death. I would be tempted to save it here. Do I play Celeborn's Galadrium? I think I want Celeborn's Galadrium to defend Lorien because I've already played Power Too Great. And elves are nowhere close to war. Do I just sort of take the gamble that Minas Tirith is going to hold? Or do I play a card? I don't know. I don't know what I would do as, as free people here. All right. So they choose not to play a card. Relentless Assault. Did not expect that here from Shadow. I would have been... I, I like Rage of the Dunlandings. But I guess they've already sort of moved on. They're going after Lorien just from Dol Guldur into Dimmerald Dale. Into Lorien. So they think that's going to be enough. Makes sense. Could be enough. Obviously, Celeborn's Galadrium is going to be a problem for them. But All right, so Rage of the Dunlandings, they're losing two. They're definitely hoping to get a bunch of hits here. Oh, my gosh, and they only get one. Uh, they expect to get two and a half, and they get one. That's below average by a lot. And then none on the reroll. Why did they only reroll three? That should have been a fourth, a fourth die to reroll. Are, we're fighting in Minas Tirith, Relentless Assault. You have five leadership. So that's they missed out on one-sixth of a hit because that would only hit on a six. So not a big mistake. Oh, nice. Free people notes that they should get one more reroll. Nice to play it properly. Good sportsmanship, Galahad. All right, zero hits from Galahad, but um, Shadow inflicted two on themselves with Relentless Assault. All right, um, free people moves now. And this is interesting. I, I think this makes sense because the fellowship is doing so well that um, I, because they got three with the Athelos, uh, just so many things going well for the fellowship. I think that if the fellowship does not get revealed here, then free people will be inclined to use a ring because Shadow has drawn quite a few character cards. Um, so I think at this point, Shadow is kind of hoping to miss or hit and not reveal. That's probably what I would be hoping as Shadow at this point. Um, they do hit and they don't reveal. So that I think is a good situation for Shadow. Um, Galahad at this point takes a random companion, which I think is exactly right because... Um, that is a three. That's an efficient use of Strider. Um, odds of getting Strider are relatively low. And you're not revealed right now. So I think that's right. All right. And they get a Hobbit. The Hobbit runs toward uh, Rohan. And... Oh, interesting. So... Shadow decided to draw a character card. It certainly makes it feel like they don't have Cruel Weather. 
by doing that. I might have been more inclined to just play give it to us because my odds of actually drawing cruel weather are pretty low. Um, so I would probably prefer to bluff it. I don't know. We'll see. I think, I mean, with all of these character card drawing, do you risk it as shadow, as free people? I think the reality is whatever the situation is, you don't know if shadow is bluffing or not bluffing. These are very advanced players. There can be bluffs within bluffs. I think as free people, you're just like, I'm doing very well. The fellowship is in great shape. I'm just getting into Mordor. I'm not going to risk. I'm not going to risk you playing, um, you know, crew weather, even if you think as free people, you have a good read on it, like an 80% read on it. It's just not worth a 20% chance. Yeah. All right. So they move, they move a second time. This protects them for sure from, um, from cruel weather so i think that's a great great play that's clearly correct even though it turns out shadow doesn't have it you got to play the odds and i think that's exactly right all right so this time shadow does hit them uh and they don't get revealed so that's really nice for um for free people to be able to go in without being revealed. I think they can just take this one corruption to go up to four. Yeah, so they're okay with that. And then um, now I think we're gonna put as shadow, I think you put give it to us. Yeah, so give it to us is in the pool now. And and you know, if you had saved Nazgul strike, if you had had Nazgul strike there, um, where uh, the previous turn, instead of drawing a card, you could have played give it to us and then when you miss you play Nazgul strike i don't know it's a tough it's a tough call um this pool is just not i mean i don't i just don't think it's that threatening to to free people especially because you've gotten rid of shelob you've gotten rid of a lot of your card drawing cards as shadow all right, so we go on to turn six. Uh, Shadow is just not in great shape. Free people is in great shape. One eye allocated and free people get nice movement. They just need to just move consistently and that's what they have. This is all good. And one thing you might have considered as Shadow is allocating like four eyes and hoping to roll like one more and then have your eyes inflict five damage you know that that puts them at six they can move only once it probably wouldn't work i just i don't i don't think it works either way um so maybe what you do is shadow, which is what shadow did is allocate one eye and then just hope that free people rolls really low movement. Um, maybe that's just what you do. Okay. So they move once they get a one. Wow. Just a pleasant climb up Mordor, not even revealed. This is just a great, great situation for free people. And, um, shadow is just going to keep pounding on Minas Tirith. They play Palantir of Orthanc. Makes sense. And they get the hits they oh almost all the hits they need, uh, and we'll see if they manage to finish finish them off. And yes, so Minas Tirith is finally finished off. Uh, free people just keeps moving along. Wow, not even revealed again. They're taking two. I don't know. Do you take a random at this point? I think you probably take a random. Um, and you get Gimli, which is perfect. And now the mouth of Sauron shows up. Fellowship moves a third time because why not? Corruption is fine. Get a one and a reveal. I don't know. Do you take a random at this point? Do you go up to six? I think you go up to six and it's fine because you have There's Another Way and Bilbo's Song. Yep. You keep Strider and you hide. This is basically done. I mean, it may be just theoretically impossible for Shadow to, to win at this point. So Strider hides. Um, Shadow is now desperately trying to 
corrupt or slow down the fellowship. I don't know what Orc Patrol really does. Um, are you you're hoping to roll get a zero or the two reveal? I guess you're hoping to draw the two reveal. Uh, yeah, you get an eye. Um, yeah, I mean, it's desperate times for Shadow. I, I think maybe the long, I mean, there it's super long odds no matter what, but maybe what you do is, um, just go on military attacks and then just hope that free people just rolls literally zero movement next round. Um, and also runs into the to the uh, eye, I mean the to the um, to the we shall get it or give it to us. Uh, yeah, I mean super super long odds for shadow. Can't really critique anything at this point. Um, so Fords of Eisen gets attacked. Shadow now has the scouts to retreat. Celeborn's Galadrium gets played. I think that makes sense. You can you have a ring. You can use it next round or this round. It doesn't doesn't really matter much better to wait until next round um so all right helms deep gets attacked doesn't really matter at this point um shadow gets rid of balra or gets rid of morgul wound allocates an eye rolls two more fellowship only gets one movement so okay so at this point, and, and this is why I would say like why don't don't bother with the orc patrol and using up a ring on that, because um, this is actually a situation where um, the fellowship might not be able to destroy the ring if they hit the red tile, um, and particularly if they lose um, Aragorn or, or Strider as the guide. Now, they're not going to lose Strider as the guide, no matter what they draw, but there there is a theoretical chance. All right, so they start off by moving, and they get a zero reveal. So now, I th no, they're still not guaranteed if the red tile comes up. Um, Shadow is drawing to get more red tiles. Uh, seems okay. Let's just count. Could they have put enough eyes in there to make it deadly? No, the fellowship is just not high enough on corruption. I mean, they've had the fellowship has had a very pleasant walk up Mordor. They've gotten a one, a two, I think a one. It was one, two, one, zero. So were those literally the lowest? They got all of the lowest possible tiles. Uh, out of that hunt pool. Um, and so, not I mean, not that even if it was a little higher, it still would have been fine, but just like Shadow doesn't even have the option of playing Lidless Eye, putting three eyes in and letting um, and letting the eyes become deadly. Because even at like seven and reveal, the Fellowship it loses Strider and then is only up to 10 corruption. So, yeah, there just hasn't been really any corruption pressure on the fellowship so good read on discarding wizard staff way back when all right um yep shadow gets rid of the little Lissai. they're not going that route that's not going to help they're just trying to they're just trying to draw um into red tiles fellowship hides uh shadow progresses toward getting uh helms deep because what the heck else are they going to do they can start to cycle. Um, they can start to cycle character cards. Um, this is interesting. Shadow, uh, free people just passed. Um, yeah, I guess it doesn't. I mean, it doesn't really matter. I, I would be tempted to just end the game. Why are we drawing it out? But I guess it's the final. So you want to try and maximize all your chances. See how the combat goes. Uh, don't don't press it if you don't have to. Okay, so daylight they're terrible. I don't think this matters much. Two hits against one press, uh, and uh, Helm's Deep falls, and then <laughs> free people is like, all right, let's just end this. 
and they move and they get an eye and that is the end of the game so free people won um you know i really didn't see any real mistakes by any side i, th I think everybody played quite well let's look at the let's look at the statistics um so i'm not sure exactly what happened here uh they got merged into one i think everybody got put here um but just looking at the um eyes you know this was this turned out to be a little high for a uh, shadow um I guess some of the hunt rolls were a little below average. And then there was that early turn where turn two, where they ended up where free people ended up getting three free movements and that went really well. Um, and they got Gandalf turn three. Yeah. This is a pretty, pretty standard game of a uh, strider sprint, just going way faster than shadow military. Um, well played by both players. I look forward to seeing the comments Thank you very much to uh, the two finalists for giving me the opportunity to review this game. I look forward to game two and potentially game three. And uh, thanks so much for watching. Have a good rest of the day.